Hello everyone, my name is George Mania and I am a researcher and manager of uh, programs at the European Business Summit Research Hub. As part of our advocacy interviews uh, of the Sherpa project, we have today uh, our uh, coordinator from the Sherpa side, but also uh, the representatives from ETAPAS, a project that has some uh, common grounds with Sherpa and together we are looking on uh, the artificial uh, intelligence and also AI policy processes. So I'm giving uh, the floor to uh, Etapas to introduce themselves and after that to, to Bern from, uh, from Sherpa to introduce himself and, uh, and the, the project. And after that, we are going uh, to, to continue with the, the questions regarding some recommendations that have been developed during the Sherpa project. So Giovanna, you have the floor. Thank you. So I'm Giovanna Garasso, I'm uh, from PwC and uh, we are uh, the technical leader of, uh, of this project while uh, the Ministry of Economy and Finance, they are the, the coordinator. First of all, what is the ETAPAS project we are currently carrying out? Uh, ETAPAS stands for uh, um, Ethical Technology Adoption in um, Public Administration Services. And uh, the project uh, aim is to help uh, public sector organizations to responsibly adopt disruptive technologies uh, to improve the services they provide in a, an ethically compliant manner. So uh, the focus is uh, not only on artificial intelligence, but covers a broad area of technologies, including among others AI, but also uh, robotics, uh, big data, and, uh, and et cetera. Strictly speaking, our objective is to provide risk identification and mitigation tools for the adoption of disruptive technologies. And, uh, but this will also uh, try to inform, uh, the give input for a better regulatory process of uh, AI and, uh, and disruptive technology uh, as a whole. The final output of the project will be, we hope, a governance model to allow other public organizations to replicate the methodology and adopt innovative solutions while assessing, monitoring, and mitigating associated ethical risk. There is a lot already on, on, this, on these topics, but not a lot in the, in the area of, of, of public sectors. Bernd, if you can follow up a bit on Sherpa. Okay, Sherpa is an EU project that's been running for about three years now. So it started in 2018 and it's uh, got another five months or so to go until October 2021. Uh, we are looking at ethical and human rights aspects of AI and big data, things that we call smart information systems. The project has done a number of activities around determining what exactly those ethical and human rights components are. We've done 10 case studies, we've done a set of scenarios, we've done analysis of the, the uh, academic literature, both ethical and legal, and we've looked at security aspects in particular. We then developed a number of uh, possible mitigation strategies. Uh, so we, said we, we looked into um, codes or methodologies used for ethics by design. Uh, we looked at the regulatory environment, uh, we looked at possibilities in standardization, and we suggested the terms of reference for a potential regulator. Uh, we've done extensive work with stakeholders, we've done a big uh, uh, survey, we have a Delphi study, we have a stakeholder board, and we've tested some of these ideas through a set of focus groups. Now that's what the project has done overall, and on the basis of that we've come to a set of recommendations that are based on our understanding of what AI is, what those ethical issues of AI are, and uh, what might be a suitable way of conceptualizing these and uh, a suitable way that also um, supports then interventions and suggestions. So very briefly, we are suggesting that AI should not be seen as a particular type of technology, but more as an ecosystem, an ecosystem of ecosystems, which consists of some type of technology, but also a broader socio-technical environment. And the key question is, how can we structure such ecosystems in ways that are conducive to human flourishing? And that's what our recommendations are about. Okay, and now if we can proceed with the questions or if Giovanna has some other questions or if you have any kind of questions for each other. 
My only question that I have, we have been working now on, uh, on, on the risk framework. Um, we will also um, work on uh, indicators, uh, on KPIs. Um, we will also develop a prototype for the, for, uh, in order to, let's say, um, uh, support the public administration to, to, to assess this. Um, my question is, uh, we have just started uh, and we have uh, only, we have done the literature review. Uh, we found out that in the public sector, uh, there is not a lot already done. I don't know if you, um, if you have uh, also some input uh, uh, concerning the public sector uh, among the, the cases that you have analyzed. Yes, we did uh, have several of, of the cases we looked at um, took place in the public sector. So for example, we looked at smart cities and uh, in particular, at, at, uh, one example that we, we worked with, that's clearly a public sector activity. Um, some of the scenarios we brought were also very public sector oriented. So we looked at predictive policing. Uh, we looked at the future of um, data analytics in education. So all of these are public sector activities. And um, while I agree that um, there may not be a lot of specific guidance for the public sector, um, our experience is that the, the issues that people in public sector face are often very similar or identical to the ones that you find in the private sector. Um, and similarly, some of the mitigation strategies are also very similar. So while I, I can understand why you say there isn't a lot of work being done in the public sector, my guess would be that a lot of the private sector work can be, can be applied and used and, and transferred into the public sector. And now if you can start with the, with the questions uh, regarding the yes. first recommendation and after that, the, the second recommendation. First of all, um, the, the first, we would like to, make, to, to speak about the first recommendation on the use of appropriate and clear definition of AI and digital technologies. Uh, so uh, in terms of understanding of what is meant by artificial intelligence, um, in Etabas, we have been uh, uh, work, uh, we have used, uh, um, of course, uh, we have tried to identify a working definition of, uh, of uh, OAI. Um, we have used this one in Etabas, which is a system's ability to correctly interpret uh, external data, learn from this data, and apply these learnings to accomplish specific goals and tasks through flexible adaptation. Um, this is the most common definition we are referring to in the context of etapas and it's uh, aligned to Kaplan and Elaine definition uh, reported across several different literature sources. So this was a, a basic agreement among uh, all the, I would say the, the academic partners that have started working on the, on the, um, on the literature review. Uh, we do think that is important, you know, we are starting from it. Uh, and we have used this. This is not to say that this is the, the best one, but uh, working on, a, on, a, on a, a working definition, we, we thought this was the, the starting point. Um, we think that we, it's also important to, um, to have a shared definition of artificial intelligence because uh, it could lead to a meaningful reflection and, and debate about the diverse aspect of these uh, disruptive technologies. Uh, it would avoid the misunderstandings and support a shared common knowledge of AI that can be used also by non-technical experts, including in the discussion on both the AI ethics guidelines and the AI policy recommendation. In, uh, this is more uh, relevant for the public sector where we really don't have many technical uh, experts and uh, where people uh, the, now the, the, the need of the, pro, of, uh, of the procurers um, in, in the public sector is really to buy, to procure these uh, technologies. Uh, and when the regulatory, uh, the legislation will be out, they will need also to apply such legislation. Uh, so uh, a shared definition of AI would be relevant. Um, uh, first of all, for regulatory purposes, for us, because it, it, uh, since it would allow to clearly identify and attribute responsibilities, support legal, legal predictability and also a clear regulatory application, um, but also to properly assess related risk, 
defining uh, who is the agent and the boundaries of its action, clearly support the linkages with its risk and uh, the mitigation action to be implemented in the, in the AI system. Um, and also for communication reasons, because uh, uh, clear and straightforward definition are helpful also to disseminate results, uh, reach a large audience and raise awareness among citizens and policymakers. And you know, um, from the public sector perspective, this is also a, an important point. Then another uh, um, uh, question was uh, if, if there is uh, an agreed definition AI that uh, we think that uh, would be useful to, to use. Well, we as said, I, I told you about the definition that we used in the, in the, uh, the working definition in our project. Um, to be honest, we still have not, the project started in January, uh, we still have not found an unanimous and commonly shared definition of the term AI. Uh, many perspectives have been taken to define this term. I think that uh, a useful definition AI would be a practical definition that clearly states uh, its features such as autonomy, adaptability, and therefore enables the attribution of its uh, ethical, legal, and social impact. And uh, for example, the the definition that uh, you know I, I, I read before that I mentioned earlier uh, derives from this uh, literature review is uh, pretty effective and uh, um, likewise the definition proposed by Sherpa. I, I'm very honest with you. Uh, we, there, are, uh, there were four partners working on the work package on in the literature review. Uh, when I did the first review of the first deliverables, uh, every, every partner, all the partners, uh, you know, started from a different definition. So um, we put a, a, a bit of, of, uh, of effort to try to identify one, at least for our project that could be, let's say, uh, used during the, during the project. Of course, the definition included in the European Commission proposal for an AI regulation is very helpful. Uh, as uh, it is support the convergence of the policy dialogue on a shared and internationally recognized definition. Um, I, I, I know that the, the, the regulation is still under, uh, you know, uh, will need to be adopted, but uh, I think for the public sector, uh, it, it would be very important, uh, but also for all, I would say, to have uh, one definition uh, agreed yeah, I mean, I think what you're saying sort of points to the reason why we've put this recommendation in there, because after grappling with the concept of artificial intelligence for several years, we came to the conclusion that there is no one definition that will capture them all. And rather than try to artificially define something which is possibly not capable of being defined, we suggest that in a particular context, one needs to define clearly what it is one's talking about. And depending on the definition, different types of ethical and uh, legal concerns may arise and different types of ways of dealing with them will be relevant. So, so that's really all we're trying to do in the, in the Sherpa project. So we're not saying that there is a, a definition of uh, AI. What we're saying is that there are various uses of AI. So we suggest that there's a distinction between machine learning as, as a narrow specific type of uh, technology um, between that and then the application of these technologies in a broader socio-technical environment. And then there's also um, AI in, in the sense of being um, human-like, um, ha having capabilities that approach what, what we as human beings can do. Um, those are all uh, valid ways of defining AI, but they're completely separate and disparate, right? So rather than say, they, this is AI, what we're saying is that there are different discourses around AI and depending on which one you pick, you need to say what it is you, you're, you have in mind and also what the consequences of that are. And I think the, um, the, the proposed regulation that you refer to um, makes that point as well. Because uh, if, if you look at the, the text there, the definition of AI is not actually part of the regulation, but the definition of AI is part of an annex. And that's yes. done explicitly so that, they, that it can change over time. That's uh, true, but at least, you know, they, uh, let's say, uh, start uh, defining uh, artificial intelligence. Of course, it's not, let's say, unique, uh, as you say, it's, uh, it's right. And also, we, you know, the one, the, the definition that we have been uh, using in Edava is, is a rather broad working, uh, working definition, no? But at least for the public sector, it's important to start having uh, some input to follow. 
Yeah, no, I agree. And the, I, I fully agree. The definition is important, but at the same time, it's impossible, right? So, so I think yeah, that I that's the tension that you have to deal with in this space. You, you, you know that you have to say what it is you're talking about, knowing full well that there will be other meetings of the same term which are not covered. And I think that's the importance of our recommendation. You make it clear what it is you want to talk about. And that's all we're saying. First of all, the, the first one I question I got is what should an AI impact assessment entail and how should the measurement be conducted and by whom? Concerning our project uh, is to look at, at a specific dim dimension of the possible impacts that a comprehensive impact assessment uh, would have. Uh, because we, we will not have a, you know, a broad um, impact assessment measurement, but we will focus on the ethical risk related to non responsible usage of uh, disruptive technologies. Um, here we have built a taxonomy of eight main risk categories uh, involving overall 33 risks. Uh, informed by an extensive literature review on the ethical and social impact of, on destructive technologies, and by the already defined uh, 10 ethical principles that build up the ETAPAS code on conduct. The, the risks are the basis uh, from which we are starting to define a set of indicators that will allow single public sector organization, so it's a, at the level of a single public sector organization, to assess the degree of, ethically, of, of the ethicality of their application. So the impact assessment shall take be place before, during, and after the adoption of artificial intelligence. In our interpretation, it shall be performed by the public sector process owners and supported by their technological providers, providers because of course, uh, input for this analysis come also from the technologies provide, providers. Another aspect is that uh, there is a, a link between the impact assessment of artificial intelligence uh, and, and the corresponding mitigation actions related to this risk. Um, because uh, it's important for the, for the public sector uh, um, process owner to, um, to have an idea of uh, what are the, 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 um, the, what is the impact of artificial intelligence, but also if uh, uh, identify risk, what are the, the action plan, the mitigation action to, to be put in place in reference to this, uh, to this risk. For this reason, we provide a comprehensive list of risk indicators, which can be assessed in a computational manner through multiple choice questions or direct feedback interviews. The relevant stakeholders, both inside and outside the public sector organization, are then called to assess the risk according to different specific indicators that pertain to them. So what I'm saying here is that uh, uh, as an input from our project, uh, we have been really working only on, uh, let's say, a specific type of uh, impact, uh, which is uh, this uh, ethical risk related to non-responsible use of uh, disruptive technologies. So, um, and uh, this is the input that we could give uh, to, uh, um, to uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, uh, a wider framework. Um, so, it, it, at least for us, uh, um, if I, I, uh, I see that there are several organizations working on this uh, topic of uh, on AI impact assessment, um, I've seen that, uh, for example, for the public sector, it's the GRC who have been uh, working on a, an impact assessment model for artificial intelligence in the public social and economic impact in the public sector. I think that uh, overall, uh, there is still, uh, you know, this is an area where uh, there, is there is still work to do. Um, at least at APAS, uh, we have been working on this, uh, on focusing on this uh, aspect. Then uh, if organizations want to anticipate the negative effect of artificial intelligence, what potential issues uh, should be watched out um, for? Um, Okay, so our aim as part of this project, uh, this is a rather relevant question for the ETAPAS project, um, because uh, um, our aim is exactly to develop and make available by the end of the project uh, some pr practical tools 
for anticipated, anticipating negative impacts, which might be stemming directly for, from the specific technological application, providing guidelines to both assess and mitigate the associated uh, risks. Um, so it's really um, uh, the final theme of the project is really to try to anticipate the ne negative effect of uh, artificial intelligence and other technologies for the for the public sector and guide also the the public sector uh, employees procurers uh, uh, to to procure ethically oriented uh, technologies. Um, for example, for the public sector, which is really important. Some example of such risk might include, might include AI application, enhancing discriminations, uh, increasing social isolation, spreading disinformation, replacing human agency, increasing privacy and cybersecurity risks. And all these risks are, are particularly important for, uh, for the public sector. Um, uh, so what we would like to do is to map, define and assess each of these risks. Um, any organization needs to have a clear and comprehensive understanding of all possible risks in order to perform an informed decision making on which disruptive technologies uh, to adopt. Uh, this is the key outcome that uh, this project would like to deliver to any public organizations. And um, a, a final uh, input that I, I could give is the following, is that uh, uh, please consider that when we uh, submitted this, um, this uh, proposal, we submitted it a, a first time and we focused it only on artificial intelligence. Then the commission asked us to wider the, the, the scope and involving and, you know, to other disruptive technologies. And, uh, and uh, the Ministry of Economy and Finance and also the other public administration in this project, uh, they were all very uh, positive. Why? Because, uh, you know, um, sometimes we focus on uh, one thing from a research point of view, from uh, on, on, on some technologies uh, in a separate way, while the, the a public sector uh, civil servant, you know, people in charge also implementing some disruptive technologies in the public sector, probably they would also like to have uh, uh, more practical guidelines for more than one technologies. So this is also uh, uh, important. Uh, not only I can have, I would say, uh, negative impact in terms of uh, um, ethics and, uh, you know, their uh, risk, um, but uh, uh, it's also important to, to have a look at more than one technology also because there is a, a convergence among uh, uh, such more than one technologies. And also AI is, uh, you know, and this is also very relevant for, for, for AI. Okay, I think your, your last point uh, actually links to the earlier discussion around the definition of AI, namely that uh, AI may not be the, the core or the only question. There are other technologies which partly con contribute to and, and constitute and, and partly sit alongside AI and that, that are at least as important. Um, so, so from what you're saying, I, I, uh, I, I agree. Uh, our recommendation from the Sherpa project is to um, uh, start from the fact that there are many impact assessments already out there. Now we know data protection impact assessment, we have risk assessment, we have environmental impact assessment, uh, we have human rights impact assessment. Many of those exist, all of those exist. And uh, the question that we asked and that we think uh, in this um, recommendation we, we want to highlight as in need of, of a response is uh, how would you do such impact assessments specifically for AI? And uh, I agree with you that there are many existing models out there. We've identified uh, about 40 AI impact assessments and at the moment we are trying to review those and, and synthesize them and try to um, come up with a classification and understanding what exactly they cover. Uh, so, so uh, again, I don't think that there will be one AI impact assessment, but I think at this point, what's not clear enough is what options are there? What can you uh, assess? What are the limitations of such assessment? And I think that needs to be clarified in order for such impact assessments to make sense and be applicable. 
Yes, I, uh, I agree. In fact, that's why we have been uh, focusing on what I said, which is uh, we think which is could be relevant for uh, for the public sector and specifically for this uh, project. But of course, this, this for me is also an area of, of uh, further research where, you know, um, uh, if there is a, 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 um, to be included then on, on a roadmap for uh, future research, because uh, it's it's something which is not uh, really uh, well, uh, further research is needed, uh, and um, uh, I don't know if this is relevant because you have been uh, recorded. But uh, I'm also in a um, uh, in a um, working group because uh, um, we are part of as PwC also of the vision project. I don't know if you know this project. It's a coordination action. Um, that the manage um, that coordinates the work of uh, uh, four uh, AI center of uh, um, of uh, AI uh, four um, of the ICT forty eight uh, 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 project and the ICT forty eight project um, are uh, um, uh, set up to uh, to set up next center of excellence in the area of artificial intelligence and uh, um, uh, the DFKI so the German uh, um, Center for Artificial Intelligence, they have been uh, putting together some um, uh, develop team, they call it team development workshop, um, and, uh, and which are, let's say, um, some, some uh, workshop with experts from different projects uh, to uh, um, define some, some common roadmap for future research in artificial intelligence. And when we uh, discussed it, this was one of the, of the topic, no? So uh, a workshop will be organized in uh, uh, September uh, in order to uh, define a further research roadmap in the era of artificial intelligence. This is impact assessment is one of the, of the horizontal topic. Uh, so I don't know if you could also be interested in participating to that, this, pro, this type of workshops, because yeah. uh, um, the idea there, uh, and it's not only related to public sector, I, I'm involved in the public sector one just because uh, it's, uh, etapas, uh, it's relevant also for, uh, for, for etapas, uh, and also because at least from PwC, I work in the public sector department so we could give, we can give input now this network of excellence just started some months ago so they they don't really have so many output but while instead your your project you have already carried out several years of research so mm -hmm. probably could be interesting also if you could uh, participate. Yeah, I think that, that sounds just like the, the thing that Sharpa should be doing and would want to be doing, yes. I think this exchange was very fruitful on uh, both sides uh, for Sherpa to, to see exactly how Etapas is going to build the premises of growing, but also from uh, the Etapas point of view to see exactly how Sherpa has been uh, very close to its end and propose recommendations and also have the, the occasion uh, to discuss a bit and to exchange some uh, some best practices because as you both of you agreed uh, there is no one single definition for artificial intelligence it might be approached from different angles and perspectives with different approaches so i think uh, this uh, this conversation this conversation was uh, an added value for the project itself so we are going to encourage this kind of uh, interactions also in uh, in the future uh, with that being said, I would like to, to thank you to, to all of you for uh, your time and availability of uh, having this, uh, this meeting. And uh, of course, in, uh, in the future, we are going to, to, to keep each other connected on, uh, on our work. Thank you very much.